Alison, why was this partnership between the Labour Party and Sipi Livni's Hath Noir, the movement, not working? Were there serious ideological differences? I mean, we say that this was created in order to fight the 2015 election, right. but at what point did it stop being useful? At what point did... Is Tippi Livni, I mean, let's, let's start with the basics. Is Tippi Livni an electoral liability for Gabi? Was she, I guess, now this is all past tense? Um, I'm not sure if the, really, if it sunk uh, in the polls, the Labour Party uh, Zionist Union, which was basically the equivalent of the Labour Party plus Tippi Livni sunk in the polls because of the Tippi Livni factor. I mean, if I had to point to one factor or the other, I would definitely point to the fact that Gabai was not grabbing the national yes, imagination. He's no star politician as a leader, either, exactly. He wasn't a star politician. But like I said, it wasn't a great match. The, the Labour Party, first of all, has a long, long history. It has a Established institutions. It has a primary system. It's an organism in and of itself. And so, uh, you know, this this uh, small elite vanity party was trying to to uh, to become part of it. It wasn't uh, it wasn't something that could have sort of organically match up. The, the Zionist Union politician weren't going to run in the in the Labour Party primaries. It was it was a problematic uh, beast. I think as we get closer to the election date, that we're going to see many more parties sort of join together and run together. But they they also will not be sort of natural partners that uh, one would expect would stay together forever, you know, for years beyond that particular election that they're joining together for. Uh, so, Alison, let's let's take a look then uh, at Avi Gabay. Is this a masterstroke or a terrible blunder? Has Tippi Livni been checkmated or does she have some sort of retort she can throw back? Um, you know, I don't know if it'll it'll do her well to start, you know, throwing shade at uh, at Avi Gabay and and the Labour Party. You know, her her message, what's what's been attractive uh, to, about her as a politician has been that she's been clean, that she hasn't been a mudslinger, that she hasn't been uh, been sort of get, getting down into the into the dirt with the uh, with the other politicians. So if she wants to maintain sort of her stature, gravitas, and and remain uh, a prospect for joining another party, I don't think she's going to start. Uh, a throwing mud at Avi Gabay and basically, you know, will probably be best served to walk away with her dignity and say, fine, you think uh, you'll do better without me? You know, be my guest and let the Labour Party do what the Labour Party is going to do, which is not kind of leaning in favour of uh, embracing and lifting up Gabay and allowing him to lead them to victory. No. OK, well, let's have a look at some of the other players who are competing for the exact same votes in the Israeli centre. Mm -hmm. The white knight, dark horse, calling what you will of this election season, is Benny Gantz, the very handsome former IDF chief who has not said a word, uh, hasn't even officially announced his candidacy. Yesterday, I-24 News caught him at Amos Oz's funeral, asked him, and his reply was, it's about Israel, that's what matters, it's not left or right. What, what indications do we have, if any, about what sort of campaign Benny Gantz is going to run, and whether he's a serious challenge to Netanyahu, or whether he's just going to crash and burn like many other attempts to form other new personality-based centrist parties? Yeah, well, first of all, congratulations to I-24 News, because the response to your question led the Israeli national newscast Benny Gantz speaks you know he was sort of the the human personification of if you don't have anything uh, to say say nothing and people kept wondering does he have nothing to say you know and then he is you know sort of keeping his cards close to his chest and waiting for the for the best possible time to come out with his worldview or his political stance presuming uh, that he has one um, he is popular, you know, it must drive people like Yair Lapid crazy, who's been, you know, tr working for years in politics to look at these polls. And Benny Gantz, who has not done a thing in the political realm, is, you know, polling way above him just uh, by the fact that he was or a respected really general. given an indication that he wants to dive into politics rather than been pushed into it by all the hypothetical polls that suggested he would do well in politics. I don't think anyone's getting into this if they don't really want to. So I would suspect that he does, uh, that he does really want to do this. I mean, he's a, he's a very attractive, right now, he's a very attractive vessel, vehicle that needs to be filled with ideas that will um, appeal to the Israeli public. And that is going to depend to a and great extent. He will be defined by the people that he puts around him. He will be defined by his number two, three, four, five on the list. Of course, he still has to put uh, people on his list, that party that he's calling Resilience for Israel.